Thank you so much for your kindness. I'm so glad to see so many of you were able to remain. I recognize I'm between you and the door in some respects. Um, I'd also like to express appreciation to my colleagues from Texas and to my family, friends, um, fellow co-workers who were here with me today. Your presence means the world. I have this little swollen cheek. It's not the mumps. I'm not contagious. Um, and you may have noticed that my speech is impaired just a little bit. So I'll promise to try and articulate clearly if you'll promise to listen with intention. Um, in the interest of time, I'm limiting my remarks today, but you can read more about my thoughts in the August edition of the Journal of School Nursing. NASN's 50th anniversary has given us the opportunity to revisit our roots in service to children, families, and the poor in the Henry Street Settlement and to recognize visionary leaders who in 1968 forged our organization. Recurrent themes have presented themselves time and again in our NASN documents. The need for research to document our value to student success. Increased student me mental health concerns. Social determinants of health impacting children's lives. Budget impacts on school nurse staffing and our focus on students. I'll retire flat loading. Increasingly complex student health conditions and mental health concerns are impairing students' ability to fully participate in their ed education. Technology is playing an ever-increasing role in your practice, electronic health records, and wearable technology supporting students in the classroom. Our em emergency medication stocks include epinephrine, an albuterol, and an opioid antagonist, naloxone. Schools are drilling, run, hide, fight, in preparation for active shooters, and our students and staff are paying the emotional toll, aren't they? We know, we know that adverse childhood experiences are ACEs, and toxic stress impact a lifetime of health, resulting in chronic conditions and decreased life expectancy. 34 million children in the United States experience ACEs. Principals report that toxic employees are their greatest challenge, making it clear that students aren't the only one bringing their ACEs to school. Dr. Robert Block, past president of the American Academy of Pediatrics, names adverse childhood experiences as the greatest threat to this nation's health. As you look at this list of good health essentials, I know that you, like me, can think of a multitude of students who are missing one, if not all, of these essentials for school health. Healthy People campaign has set goals for the nation's health. And in 2000, they called for the reduction of health disparities. In 2010, they called for the elimination of those disparities. And the 2020 benchmark just six months away, calls for health equity. Yet you and I know there is a long road to health equity for the children and families we're serving in our communities. Imagine a future. We really must, you know. We have to look beyond the horizon. We have to look beyond the walls of our clinic 
in our school systems and consider those impacts, those influences that are going to influence our school nursing practice. And we have to understand how we can mitigate the risks of those factors and how we can leverage the benefits for student success. Educational professionals are predicting a rise in self-paced learning. Students are going to curate their own curriculums. That sounds really different, doesn't it? Um, but they're going to pursue their passion. They're going to leverage their imaginations to follow career paths that they might not otherwise have known because artificial intelligence and virtual reality are going to give them ability to see and experience those careers over a K through 12 education. I wish I'd had that. In the not too distant future, we can expect tiny implanted devices under our skin that will monitor our health 24-7 early detection of illness states, early intervention, and the prevention of chronic disease. But will this absence of chronic disease in the population result in decreased health-seeking behaviors, such as we find with communicable disease and vaccine? And consider the implications of big data for health information privacy. Imagine a future where you could walk around your school or in your clinic with a handheld device that would identify viruses by their genetic code on the horizon, where 3D printed pharmaceutical technologies are produced on demand to meet a patient's specific clinical requirements based on their DNA? And will school nurses be a barrier or will they welcome? The ability to change, uh, uh, one more, when gene editing can diminish the impact of inherited hemoglobinopathies such as sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia, Think of what that means for your students. I know you care for them. The ability to change one's genetic code does not come without ethical concern. Who determines what's a good gene or a bad gene? Who determines what is normal? Will widespread use of gene therapy cause society be, to be less accepting of those who are different? And what are the unknown consequences of sperm and ova gene therapy for future generations? Questions we don't know. But most importantly, will the high cost of these technologies be inaccessible to vulnerable populations? The future of nursing, leading change, advancing health, established recommendations for the nursing profession and action goals for 2020. We've made some progress. We have some work to complete. We have seen an increase in BSN degrees. If you're an associate degree or a diploma nurse who desires a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, I urge you to apply for the NASN RN to BSN Education Advancement Scholarship. We've doubled the number of doctorates in just seven years. Joel met. Yeah, it's good news. If you want to advance your degree, commit today. You can apply for the NASN Endowment Education Scholarship to advance your professional goals. I did a Slido poll. We had maybe 100 people um, participate. For nurses who serve on community, corporate, or nonprofit boards, 24% of those respondents said yes, 76% said no. If you're in that 24%, or even if you didn't vote, 
and you serve on the board, I urge you to go to the Nurses on Boards Coalition website and register your service on those boards to help meet the goal of 10,000 nurses on boards by 2020. If you don't sit on a board, I urge you to market your skills to organizations that you're passionate about and bring your expertise to the decision making of those boards and influence the health of your community. Diversity and inclusion are core values of our organization. And as school nurses, we have access to such broadly diverse populations, don't we? And there's an opportunity there for you to talk with that future generation of this nation's nurses about their ability to influence health in the communities right where they live to change the trajectory of health in those communities, and as you and I know, to garner professional rewards beyond measure. But the Future of Nursing 2020-2030 study is underway, and it seeks your insights on how to advance the profession of nursing to help reduce health disparities and to create a culture of health in this nation. Slido poll said 2%, 2 of the school nurses who voted participated in the first town hall related to education, research, and practice. So here's my charge to you. There are two more opportunities for you to participate. The next town hall, paying for care and complex health and social needs, will be held in Philadelphia in July. Now you tell me, do you know anything about paying for care and complex social and health needs of students? Right, you sure do. And then there'll be a town hall in Seattle, high tech, high touch. And wouldn't it be nice that the evolution of technology would free us for higher level interventions? So I urge you as school nurse leaders to raise your voice, contribute to the evolution of our profession and influence the future of student health by informing this process. You can register for both events at the National Academy of Medicine's Future of Nursing 2020-2030 website. School nurses are the healthcare providers closest to students and families, witnessing every day the challenges they face in achieving equity in both ed education and healthcare. Dr. Richard Carranza, Chancellor of the New York City Schools, posits that equity is the provision of what is needed to meet the bar that is set. What's the bar that you set for your students for their education and their health care outcomes? And what resources do they need to meet that bar? As health care systems place an increased focus on care coordination, and they emphasize health rather than illness and deploy public health interventions addressing social determinants of health, the future of health care for millions of American students is in the wheelhouse of school nurses. Imagine a future, if you will with me, where all children are raised in safe, nurturing, healthy communities without fear of hunger, homelessness, violence, or environmental hazard, where schools and hospital, hospitals form collaborative hubs to support their communities, where physicians, other healthcare providers, and journalists turn to school nurses as experts in the healthcare system where equitable reimbursement for school nurse practice impacts an entire healthcare system as we provide primary prevention, early intervention, health education, 
seamless care coordination across systems, a promotion of a culture of health. Imagine a future where school nurses are recognized as population health gold. So I'm missing the slide, but that's okay. I want you to envision the image of the National School Health data set, Every Student Counts. When every school employs a full-time professional nurse all day, every day, school nurses will have access to the largest repository of student health data in this nation. 59 million plus students. Those millions of students represent big data, data that tells the stories we know are so important, but also that can, data that can help this nation better understand children's health, that can influence local, state, and federal policy, and can identify best practices in school health. The data representing the care that you deliver to students has the potential to change that trajectory of students' health care. So make your plan now to contribute your data to the National School Health Data Set, Every Student Counts. President Nina Fakaris has taught us to be builders, disruptors who look beyond the present and imagine beyond the boundaries of what exists now. And she reminds us that as school nurses, we deal with the unknown every day, don't we? I say to you, it's not enough for us to witness and document the disparities that we see. That we have to be transformational leaders. We have to use our institutional power to lead the nation in improving student health outcomes. I continue Nina's mantra that using our individual and our collective voices to portray an accurate narrative of our practice and of the children we care for, that we use our voices to impact policies within schools and the larger community beyond school walls that we raise our voices that call for a commitment to healthy communities for our children and families. With school nurses like you and me, determined to be a force for the future, NASN's 100th anniversary can celebrate embedded upstream solutions, providing family and children's equity and access to safe housing, nutrition, and high quality education and health care. We can celebrate efficient, interoperable data collection systems that soundly seal the argument that school nurses positively impact student success. And we can celebrate secured pipelines of funding for a school nurse on every campus, all day, every day, because the school is Thank you. And why is that? Because the school nurse is recognized as an absolute necessity. Can you focus on a future for children that they do not yet see for themselves? If you do, and if you're ready to be that force, Please stand and repeat after me. And be loud. <laughs> I am a school nurse leader. I am a school nurse leader. Oh, we can get passionate now, can't we? I commit to improving students' lives. I commit to improving students' lives. I am a force for the future. I am a force for the future. Thank you.